Raoul. And today I'll be going over factoring polynomials. This is just a specialized video to help students who will be doing the West African Examination Council Senior Secondary School Mathematics Examination for Liberian Schools. Um, factoring is a major topic because you use factoring on a whole lot of other to topics. So it's very important to know how to factor. So today what we're going to be doing, we're going to introduce you to some very basic concepts of factoring, like factoring by factoring out the GCF, factoring quadratic trinomials, and factoring uh, two kinds of quadratic trinomials, uh, ones in which the leading coefficient is 1 and other ones in which the leading coefficient is, uh, now is, is not 1. So first of all, let's go over the basic concept of factoring. So let's look at the number 28. What do we mean by factors of 28? What are factors of 28? The factors of 28 would be the numbers that you can divide, uh, that can evenly divide 28. So when I look at 28 right here, for example, look, what are some numbers? To do this, one of the basic things you can do is to make a T chart. So you can put, uh, I'm sorry, on top, yeah, well, you don't have to cross it up there. In fact, let me clean this up. So let's make a T. This is what we'll call it a T. And then you put 28. Now, 1 and the number itself will always be factors of a number. Now, you have two factors already, 1 and 28. Now, 28 is an even number. So obviously, 28 can be divided by what? 2. What is 28 divided by 2? 14. And then you begin to think, can 3 divide 28? Well, not. If you use the divisibility rules for 3, when you add 2 to 8, it's going to be 10. 10 is not a multiple of 3, so 3 would not. What's about 4? Well, yes. So you have 4 and what? 7. Well, 5 wouldn't work, 6 wouldn't work. You come back to 7. So obviously, the factors of 28 would be 1. 2, 4, 7, 14, and 28. So now what's about 72? How can we find the factors of 72? Well, let me move over here and see. So, well, again, I did my T's wrong. Let me just do this T again. So I have 72. Again, 1 and 72 will be all those factors. Next thing, 72 is a uh, even number, so it's divisible by 2. That will be 36. Now, if I add 7 to 2, I will get 9. 9 is a multiple of 3, so obviously, 72 can be divided by 3, and that will give me 24. Well, can I divide 72 by 4? Well, yes, that's going to be 18. Can I do it by 5? No. By 6? Yes. 6 and 12. Uh, 7? No. Then I will have 8 and 9. 10? No. 11? No. Then I'm going back to 12. So the factors of 72 would be... 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 18, 24, 36, and 72. So these are the factors of 72. You know, the concept of factoring is something we often overlook, but it's extremely important for you to understand all the higher level mathematics. So we understand now the factors of 28 and 72 we have them listed. Now, let's extend our discussion to the concept of the greatest common factor. So let's move on to finding the greatest common factors of 72 and 72 and 28. So we have the factors of 72 and 28. So 
So let's move on to finding the greatest common factors of 72. So to find the greatest common factor of 20, 72 and 48, what we need to know, what we need to do first is to relist the factors of 72 and 48. So we said it was 1, 2, 4, 7, 14, and 28. And it was 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, 12, 18, 24, 36, and 72. So these are the comp these are the factors of 28. So prior to getting you to understand the meaning of the greatest common factor, I want us to find what I would call the common factors of common factors of 22, 28 and 72. So what are those factors that are factors of 28? Also factors of 22. We have them going to be 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, uh, 4 and 3. Okay, yes, 4 for both. Um, 6 is yes, 6 is not there. So no, 7, no, 8, no, 9, no, 14, no, 28, no. So the common factors of 28 and 72 would be 1, 2, and Four. So because the common factor of, one, uh, of 28 and 72 will be 1, 2, 4, we can now find the greatest common factor of, four, of 70, 28 and 72. So the greatest common factor of 28 and 72, which we abbreviate as GCF, will just be what? 4. That is the highest factor that they have in common. Okay? Good. Now, we could do the same thing with 48 and 72, but let's turn now to how we can find the greatest common factors of variable factors. Say we have x to the full x cubed and x squared. Well, the greatest common factors of these variable factors would be the factor with the highest power that is shared by all of them. Now, we can see here that I can, if I'm looking at this factor of x to the full, I can write this as x squared times x squared x cubed, I can write it as what? x squared times x. And x squared we have here. So what do they all have in common? I see that all of them have in common a factor of what? x squared. So the greatest common factor of x to the fourth, x cubed, and x squared will be x squared. Now, now that we know how to find the greater common factor of whole numbers, now that we know how to find the greatest common factors of variable factors, we're going to put everything together and see how we can factor out the greatest common factor from any given polynomial. Let's try that. 32, 24, and 18. So what I'm going to do is that I want to make a T chart for each one of them and see it. With time, we have to get away from making the T chart and be able to see them quickly once we can uh, rehearse and fully understand our multiplication facts. And I wish I don't think it should be a problem. So let me put 32 over here, 24 and 18. I will start with the smallest of these numbers. Well, 1 and 18, 18 is an even number, so 2 is going to work. 18 divided by 2 is 9. I know I can divide this by 3, that's going to be what, 6. So clearly, those are the only factors of 18, 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. Let's go for 24, it's going to be 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and uh, 8, 4 and what, 6, right, 5, 6, we're going back to that. So those are the factors of 24. For 32, we're going to have 1 and 32. 2 and 16, 3 is not going to work, 4 is going to work, 
uh, five no, six no, seven no, eight no, and so that's what we're going to have. So now, since the, the factors of 32 will be 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32, and the factors of 24 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. And the factors of 18 are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. We see that the greatest common factor shared by all of these numbers, again, is going to be 4. No, is it four? No, we have one. Let's find the common factors. One, 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 two, two, two. Uh, if we have four year, four year, we don't have four year. Three, 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 there's not. Eight, we have six, six, there's no six over there. Nine. So the greatest common factor here is just going to be what? Two. So the greatest common factor of 32, 24, and 18 would be 2. So the GCF of 32, 24, and 18 is 2. Let's look at the second example. In the second example, we've been given variable, a variable expression, a polynomial. So the way we process this is, let's look at the x's. So what's the greatest power that is shared by all of them? Well, the least of the power so that is shared will be x cubed. So you do x cubed is the least, so that's what is going to be shared by all of them. Now let's look at the y's. Well, we have y, y squared, y cubed. So the lowest of the power is what is going to be shared, so we have y. Now, when we take x cubed out of x to the 6, we are left with x cubed. We took y out of y, there's nothing over there. We subtract the powers, 4 minus 3, so we'll be left with x. 2 minus 1, we'll be left with y. Plus 3, 3, that's gone. And then 3 minus 1, that's going to be y squared. So this would be uh, the factors of this by factor and the greatest common factor. Now let's look at number 3. So number 3 now involves... variables and whole numbers. Well, we've done this already. We found out that the greatest common factor of 32, 24, and 18 is going to be 2. We found out the greatest common factors of the x's here would be x cubed, and the greatest common factors for the y would be y. So, how do we get in here? 32 divided by 2 is going to be what? 16, 6 minus 3, that's x cubed, and that's gone. 24 divided by 2, that will be 12, x, 4, that's going to be x, y squared, that's going to be y, plus 18 divided by 2, that's going to be 9, that is gone, that's going to be what? y squared. So we factor this, we factor this up by factoring of the GCF. Now let's look at something like that that that, that, that looks basic, but we can which can be challenging sometimes. Like a try like a, like a binomial. 35 minus 5x. So, well, what do they have in common? Well, we see that the greatest common factor of 35 and 5 will be 5. 1. This number ends in 5, so it must be divisible by 5, so we take that out. Now we divide 35 by 5, that will be 7. We we'll divide 5 by 5, that will be 1. We do not have to put the 1, that's kind of redundant. Let's move to the next one. And we could also interestingly refactor this in an interesting format, but I'm going to leave that for a future video. Number 5, we have 24x cubed. minus 12 
plus 12x squared minus 6. Plus 12x squared minus 6x. So one of the things we see here is that we have x present everywhere, and the lowest, the highest of the power that is shared is the highest exponent of x in this expression. So that would be x. 24, 12, and 6. The greatest common factor will be 6. So I'll take 6 out. Uh, and so 24 divided by 6 is going to be 4. 3 minus 1, that's going to be x squared. 12 divided by 6, that's going to be what? 2. 2 minus 1, that's going to be just x. 6 divided by 6 is just 1. So that's our answer. So basically, this is how we would factor polynomials by fact, first factoring of the GCF. Now let's look at other forms of factoring. Well, we have the number 6 here. So we will see uh, if we can come back to number 6 later because I want to keep this video short and sweet. In fact, let's go back to number 6. So we just focus on this in this video. So for number six, okay. So for number six, let's see what we do for number six. Well, I find number six interesting because we see that our leading coefficient is negative. So let's see what we can do about that. So we have number six. We have negative 18 y cubed x squared minus 72 y squared x cubed minus 81 y x to the fifth. Now, we can make our t chart and find the greatest common factors of the whole numbers we have yet. But it's also important for us to do our multiplication facts. And I know that, we know that 18 can be divided by 9, 72 can be divided by 9, and 81 can be divided by 9. So the greatest common factor would be what? 9. I'm going to take the negative out. Now, for the y y's, we have y cubed, y squared, and y. So y being the lowest of the power here is what is the, going to be the greatest common factor. We have x cubed, x squared, x cubed, and x to the fifth. x squared being the least of the power is what is going to be common to the rest. So I take that out. Now I'm going to go negative 18 divided by 9. That's going to be 2. Negative 9 times 2 will be 18. Cubed minus 1. That's going to be y squared. It's going to be x to the 0, which is 1. Now, negative 72 divided by 9 is going to be positive 8. And then y squared, that's minus 1, that's going to be y. 3 minus 2, that's going to be x. And then the same thing here again. Negative 81 divided by negative 9 is going to be positive 9. The y is out. 5 minus 2, that's going to be x, y. So we have it again. So that's good. So what we've got over here basically is what we're going basically we're going over factoring a, a trinomial factoring polynomials by first factoring of the GCF. So now let's take on another kind of factoring, which is very popular, which is very essential and very important to understanding how to solve different kinds of problems in algebra. And this has to do with factoring quadratic trinomials. Now there are two kinds we're going to engage. The first one is one in, of the form of x squared plus bx plus c. Well, for this one, it's kind of simple and easy to factor. Um, what we have to consider is that if that, if a polynomial, if a quadratic trinomial of the form x squared plus bx plus c, is factorable, then it factors into x plus p times x plus q, two binomials, wherein the product of p and q will give you c, and the sum of p and q will give you b. 
So that's what we're going to look for. Let's see how it works. Let's do some sample problems. Number one, we have y squared plus 11y plus 30. So if this is factorable, then it will factor into this form of y, y. Now then we must look for two numbers. We must multiply to give us positive 30. Because this is positive, the signs we have here must be both positive or both negative. Now how do we decide? We look over here. Because this is positive, so we must have both positive. Now we must think about factors of 30 when added gives you 11, which we know is going to be 5 and 6. Because 5 times 6 is 30, and 5 plus 6 is 11. So we have that done. Let's look at number 2. So now, we have a situation here. m squared minus 14m plus 45. Well, if this is factory, factorable, it will factor into a binomial of this form. Once we set it up, we must decide on our sign. Now, we have our c to be positive. So that means over here, we must have both positive or both negative. Now, what should we have? We look over here. It's negative, so it must be both negative. Because negative times negative will give me positive, and negative plus negative will give me negative. So now, what are factors of 45 that when added will give us 14? That would be 5 and 9. Negative 5 times 9 is negative 45. Negative 5 plus 9 is negative 14. Now let's do number 3. I have p squared minus 2p minus 24. So now we are getting into the third possible kind of problems you can factor in problems you can encounter here. So in this case, our c is negative, which means that we must have one sign to be negative and one to be positive because negative times positive will give me negative. Now, but the middle term here will be negative. So well. The number with the larger absolute value here must be negative. So, let's see. What are the numbers you can multiply to give you 24? I could do 1 and 24, but then when I subtract them, I wouldn't get 2. I could do 2 and 12, but basically I see that it's going to be negative 6 and 4. Because negative 6 times 4 will give me negative 24, and negative 6 plus 4 will give me negative 2. Will I change the order to say p plus 4p minus 6? Absolutely not, because in that case, I will have a positive 2, and that will be wrong. So now, let's move to number 4. Also, we have d squared plus 3d minus 18. Well, again, we have a negative here, c. So we're going to have it as 1 positive, 1 negative. Now, so what we think about numbers we can multiply to give us 18? So this is going to be 6 and 3. 6 times negative 3 will give me negative 18. 6 plus negative 3 will give me 3. So this is how we factor trinomials of this form. Now we have the last kind of trinomial that we want to discuss on this particular video. And this is factoring the trinomials of this form of ax squared plus bx plus c. That is the value of a is not 1. Now, one of the things I would like to share with you, when I did this back in high school, I think it was the ninth grade in Liberia, the, the method that we used was basically try and error. I want to introduce you to another way of doing this today, which we called the slide and split method. So let's see how it works. So, one of the easiest things to do here is to rewrite this problem. To do this, here's what we're going to do. And this is going to work always. And this is going to help you, avoid you thinking about all kinds of crazy things. So, we're going to slide this 5 here, this 7 over here, and we'll multiply it over here. So then, we've taken it from over there, so we have x squared plus 12x plus 5 times 7 is what? 35. Now we're going to factor this. So what do we multiply? So we have, this is positive, so everything is going to be positive. 
positive like we did in the previous uh, problems. So now we're looking for two numbers. We can multiply, they give us 35. When we add them up, we get 12. So we'll have 7 and 5. 5 times 7 is 35. 7 plus 5 is 12. Now, but you have to know that to get this 35, we multiply by 7. So we must compensate in our answer by dividing the result here by that very thing we multiply it by. So we do this, what we have here is 7 divided by 7 is 1, and then 5 is not really divisible by 7, so what we do is just multiply 7 by x, so we have 7x plus what? 5. See it? Absolutely no need to be doing prior and error and testing all the answers in the world that are possible. We are done. Number 2. We have 5t squared minus 8t plus 3. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to roll the 5 to the 3 from that product. So we're going to move this 5 over here. So we've gotten, we've gotten rid of that. So from there we have t squared minus 8t plus 15. So now we are looking for two numbers. We can multiply to give us 15, but we combine them, we have 8. Well, and in this case, they must be both negative. So we have negative, negative 3 times negative 5 will give me positive 15. Negative 3 plus negative 5 will give me negative. Now, we must compensate for this. We multiply 3 by 5 to get 15, so we must divide these two constant terms by 5. By 5. And I'm going to write the result here. So t is not divisible, 3 is not divisible by 5, so we have 5t minus 3, and for this, t minus 1, since 5 divided by 5 is 1. Now let's do the last one. So what we have here is 7, number 3, 7 h squared plus 4h minus 3. Now, we're going to do the same thing again. We are going to slide the 7 over here and multiply it. So we have a squared plus 4h minus 21. Now, what are we looking for? Now, we need two numbers. We can multiply to give us negative 21. So we know that one has to be negative, one has to be positive. And we know that 7 times what? 3. Negative 3 times 7 is negative 21. Negative 3 plus 7 is 4. And at this point, we multiply by 7, so we must divide by 7, divide by 7. So what we have is 7h minus 3 times h plus 1. So basically, this is a quick introduction into factoring. We'll follow this up but with two additional videos. One video will focus on factoring by grouping. And another video will focus on factoring uh, perfect cubes and sums of cubes. In fact, no, we still have one more slide. And this is a very simple and easy one. We are factoring the difference of squares over here. So what we call a difference of square is that when we can write the factors, we we'll recognize that the factors are perfect squares. The terms are perfect squares. Those are things for which you can find the perfect square root of. Any time we see a, a binomial of this form, a squared minus b squared, then we can factor them into a minus b, a plus b. a being the square root of this term, b being the square root of that. So, for example, on this section number one, I have y squared minus four. This is a perfect square. That's gonna be y. Four is a perfect square. So I'm going to have y minus 2, y plus 2, because the square root of 4 is going to give me 2. All right? We'll say plus or minus 2. Number 2, it's the same thing. 4m squared minus 9. Now, I know that 4 is a perfect square, which is 2. I know that 9 is a perfect square, which is 3. So the factors of this will be the square root of 4, which is 2. The square root of m squared is m minus 3. And then we have what? 2m, what? Plus what? 3. Number 3. I have t squared, r squared, minus 25d squared. Now, well, it looks complicated, but again, 
I see that 25 is the real number here that is not 1, and it's a perfect square. So all I have to do is just take, what's the square root of t squared? t. What's the square root of r squared? r. Minus, what's the square root of 25? 5. Square root of v squared is v. So it's tr minus 5v and tr plus 5v. Look complicated, but fairly easy. Number 4. Well, for number 4, I have n squared minus 5. I cannot use this on yet because 5 is not a perfect square. I cannot find the whole number. I can multiply by itself to give me 5. Now, number 5. So this one, not applicable. Later on, we're going to learn that we could factor this into something we're going to talk about later. Search. Radicals. And then number five. Well, for number five, p squared plus what? 25. Well, can we use this rule on this? No. Because this is not a sum. This is not a difference. Our rule is only applicable to different, and this is a sum. So we cannot do anything yet. Number six. We have negative 9 plus what? R squared. Now, there's a temptation to look here and say, well, this is not possible. But, well, it is possible because we can rewrite this as R squared minus 9. Now we have a minus here. And so this factors into R minus 3, R plus 3. So this ends our introduction to factoring. We'll follow this up with two general videos, one on factoring by grouping. Uh, and another video will focus on factoring perfect squares, the difference and sums of cubes. Thank you and I hope you enjoy this and uh, continue to visit us online and do more practice. This has been a production of the Foundation for Equity and Excellence in Education in Liberia, a foundation committed to providing quality content education for all like content instruction for all Liberian children. Thank you. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Thanks. Thank you.